So uh, one piece of good news is you, you only have to bear with me for uh, 15 minutes and then you can have your coffee. Uh, on top of that, I have uh, another piece of good news and another piece of bad news. Uh, the good news is that I don't have any equation in my presentation. And the bad news is that I don't have any video games either. So uh, anyway, uh, um, so um, I also have this uh, generic slide of how great AI is. And in the spirit of this uh, conference, I will uh, just skip it. Uh, we, all know the, oops, we all know the different uh, applications. Uh, that AI can do and what more can be done, especially if you uh, also uh, make it work with uh, higher bandwidth and lower latency communication and stronger processing power. So it uh, seems like we're uh, really going uh, uh, into uh, wonderful places. But as was already uh, uh, vividly uh, demonstrated, with great uh, uh, benefits come great uh, dangers. Um, there are many uh, different uh, types of dangers uh, or risks related to AI. I will focus on the cyber uh, uh, risks, obviously, uh, where uh, sophisticated adversaries can use AI to enhance their abilities to inflict damage, to serve a political, uh, a financial, or any other uh, malicious uh, goal. So to me, the main benefit that a cyber attacker uh, can gain from AI is the fact that uh, he can, uh, it, ca it can help him avoid the basic compromise between the attack efficiency and scalability. Um, if you, simply put, if an attacker wants to plan a campaign, he has two extreme options. I think it was also mentioned by, my, by the previous speaker. He can either go and, and you know, uh, spray uh, the attack uh, very widely to a huge amount of people, but uh, then you will have to use uh, generic and relatively simple uh, tools and, and the, the attack will be uh, not very effective for each and every uh, victim, but it will be compensated by the law of big numbers. The other extreme is to have uh, a very targeted attack that is hand-tailored to fit a specific uh, target. Obviously, in this case, the uh, probability of success will be much higher, but because of the effort needed to tweak the attack to fit each and every victim, it, it can only affect a limited number of, of uh, targets uh, at the time. Now, AI basically alleviates these constraints, and, and you can think about the ability to have a personalized, sophisticated attack against millions of targets all in the same time, which is pretty scary. Uh, think of, again, phishing was mentioned here. Uh, again, we all know, uh, we all received uh, thousands of thousands of uh, phishing emails, generic phishing emails, and we all, most of us, I think definitely in this uh, audience, uh, learn how to ignore them because we, you know, we know the address is not uh, one that we know, uh, the language is generic, the contact, the uh, maybe spelling mistakes, I, I didn't notice that, I, I admit. Uh, the content is not relevant for us, so we know how to uh, ignore them. And, and with time, the efficiency of, uh, or the effectiveness of such a campaign is, is reduced dramatically, uh, even though amazingly some people still uh, fall for that. But on the other hand, what was called here whaling, there are um, a very uh, targeted spear phishing attacks, which uh, the attacker uh, works to build a, a, an email that is very relevant for this specific uh, receiver of the email, so even in, to, to an extent where uh, an executive will get uh, a, a CV attachment that is the exact same profile of a person he's trying to recruit at the time, for example. So we will, you know, and he will get it from someone that he allegedly know, and he will, it will include in some cases personal details about this person, so it will definitely be something that this executive will be tempted uh, to, to respond and, and fall into this, uh, uh, into this trap. But obviously, the attacker will have to work very hard to, uh, you know, to investigate the business environment of this uh, target, the, uh, uh, the social network that he has, you know, his biography. So we will have to invest a lot of work. But AI system can do all of that in, in a split second. And then you can think about very targeted, personalized spear phishing campaign for millions of people at a time, which obviously makes it you know, exponentially more effective than the two uh, uh, options which I described, which were only the only ways to go before the AI era. You can think also about APTs, advanced persistent threats. Uh, today, as we know, uh, the attacker needs to invest a lot of time 
to uh, build an advanced persistent threat campaign. We all know the Lockheed Martin kill chain. You have to collect reconnaissance and pick the right uh, tool and, and find the, the best uh, path of entry and so on and so forth. Uh, so, again, if you're planning a, an APT campaign against a target, it will take a lot of time, so you can only do it against so many targets at the same time. But again, AI system uh, can be taught to uh, do this uh, work for, you know, thousands or even more uh, targets at a time. So think about an APT campaign that, uh, that is attacking all the hospitals in the U.S. at once, for, for each one with the exact same variant that will be most effective in this specific uh, hospital. Pretty frightening. Or, on the other hand, if the attacker is really aiming to attack a specific target, he can have different variants of the attack uh, addressing different parts of the organization or, uh, or at different points in time to maximize the probability of success. Now, if you think about it from the human, for the defender point of view, there's no way a human defender can really cope with this type of attack, which is both uh, sophisticated and personalized, and on the other hand, massive and changes with enormous speed. Uh, you know, there's no way you can connect the dots between seemingly different variants of the attack, understand what's going on, and react in time. Uh, it's doomed to fail. So it seems like in this case we'll have to fight fire with fire and assign AI-based def uh, defense systems to fight against these AI-based attackers. Uh, and even though, as, as Michal mentioned, we already have AI embedded in defense system, uh, making this uh, AI-based defense system fight against what I call this turbo hacker uh, uh, AI uh, uh, you know, attack uh, system, it's a totally different ballgame. So, but what's for sure is the uh, uh, cyber landscape, especially when you talk about sophisticated attack, is going to change because instead of the human-to-human -human mind games which we see today, which sometimes takes, you know, hours, days, weeks, you know, to, to have this campaign move from one phase to another, we're talking now, we'll be talking about machine-to-machine -machine battles where the time constant is milli or microseconds. So I don't know who's going to win, but it's definitely going to be interesting. Uh, the other uh, aspect which I wanted to talk about in terms of uh, another AI-related uh, exposure is, uh, is the ability of a sophisticated attacker to mess with AI system controlling uh, important, sometimes critical um, uh, applications in energy, in uh, finance, in uh, transport, or, or what have you. Uh, basically, this system were put in place to make decisions, quick decisions, maybe even better decisions, uh, using the data that they have at hand. Uh, however, the fact that these machines, are, uh, these are the machines that are making the decisions, right, uh, uh, which, are sometimes, which sometimes have an uh, immediate and irreversible impact with very limited human ability to monitor and, and, and overrule this decision makes it very susceptible to deception or to manipulation. And you can manipulate it through poisoning of the training data of the, of the machine learning algorithm. You can uh, inject some noise during the system operation phase uh, to create some bias, or can you simply hack into the, <laughs> into the system and, and, and change the parameters of the machine learning algorithm? And there are probably many other uh, variants, but with whatever modus operandi the attacker will choose, what will happen is that the machine will behave differently from the way it was designed to work and presumably serve uh, the uh, goals of the attacker. So you can think about uh, and if an attacker is, a, let's say, a terrorist, he can uh, teach an AI-based traffic control system uh, to behave differently than how it was designed and shut down the transportation in, a, in an entire city, or he can uh, make uh, an AI system that is in charge of managing elect electrical grid to have an unbalanced cover, uh, current distribution to make uh, the, the grid fail and create power outage, and, and there are many uh, such examples. So, in light of this, a new paradigm needs to be adopted as to how we defend these type of machines. I mean, we, we'll, we'll still need the normal uh, cyber defenses. We'll still need to guard the perimeter. We'll still need to have proper access control and all the good stuff. But these things will not block this type of attacks on the mere uh, decision process mechanism of the AI system itself. For this, we'll need to build an AI system that is resilient to these type of attacks. And, and the builders of this system 
will have to think cyber from the early phase of the design to make sure that they build mechanism to verify the validity of the data or to be able to discard uh, clusters of data which are uh, you know, presumably malicious or uh, they need to build a more robust learning algorithm, if, even if it's an expense of the agility of this uh, learning algorithm, maybe, uh, or uh, build a redundancy against attacks which will uh, potentially uh, uh, be uh, aimed to stop the AI system from working. So if you want uh, an AI denial of service type of attack, which is something we, <laughs> we haven't experienced yet. So uh, basically, uh, this um, will, will be a new, a new uh, way to, to design and build these uh, this systems. And you also will need to have uh, uh, new ways to test and qualify the systems, not just in the factory, but also in the field, because the users or the customers of these uh, systems will need to make sure they are resilient to, to this type of attacks, again, uh, their specific use case, their specific sources of data, their specific characteristics of the decisions, uh, and so on. And when you think about it, when you think of most of the users that will use this, be it in the government or in the private sector, probably many of them will be uh, clueless and overwhelmed uh, trying to uh, make this type of uh, testing and verification of the resiliency uh, of the uh, AI system. And here, uh, speaking as a member of the government, I think the government uh, has a role in helping these organizations, especially when you talk about important or critical applications, uh, to deal with this uh, situation. So it can be by building methodology that can be shared and used by the organization uh, to test this system. It can be <clears throat> by um, maybe creating uh, environments, laboratories, where uh, this, uh, these uh, users can come and test their systems against trusted data sets. Uh, or it can be, especially when you talk about critical infrastructure or government applications, uh, the government will be the one certifying uh, these uh, AI systems to ensure uh, public safety. So, uh, to summarize, uh, the AI uh, era we're stepping into definitely presents, uh, you know, huge amounts of uh, opportunity, but also great dangers. And we need to think uh, well in advance and plan ahead so uh, we will uh, be able to leverage to the maximum the benefits of this technology and avoid as much as possible its uh, negative repercussion. And for that, um, uh, a massive te technological and operational effort will need to be uh, made by all the relevant stakeholders. Uh, and new paradigms will need to be adopted as we reshape the, cyber the cybersphere uh, that will definitely be very different from the world we live in today. Thank you very much.